Hi students, sorry we're not in the library today, but I'll do my best to teach you some Latin. And the first thing that I would like to look at with you is our syllabus. Here is November 11th, um, and the first thing that I see is that we have a new prayer to tackle today, and it's none other than the Our Father. So why don't we pray this prayer together? It's on your handout of the prayer, and it goes like this. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat renium tuum, fias, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed liberanos a malo. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Well, there's no better way to start. It seems to me like uh, the pages that are um, to be covered today are pages 56 to 71. So page 56 to 71. I am going to cover these pages right now. And in order to do that, uh, let me just in general tell you what these pages are all about. In these pages from 56 to 71, you will be introduced to the fourth and the fifth declension. The fourth and the fifth declension are the topics of today. So, so far, you have seen three declensions. For today, you had to memorize the declension, uh, the endings of the third declension. Okay? And the endings of the third declension, uh, you should know them, and I would have been allowed to check on that today, and you, I'm sorry, you're probably dying to show off that you know how to do it. Anyways, I'll check on this next time. But what I would like to look at right now is uh, just a quick summary on declensions. So, let's look at this right here. You know that a declension is actually a collection of endings. And these endings, you need to memorize them. And um, a couple of things that need to be, to, be, uh, to be reviewed right here. If you look at the box that we have right here that says uh, genitive singular endings, the first thing that uh, is very important for you to know is that, you remember that, I've told you that before, but when you memorize a uh, noun in Latin, you memorize its first form, stella, for example. That's the nominative. Then the genitive is the next part. You need to know that form too, stellae. And then it's gender, feminine, and then it's meaning star. Okay? Now, it's very important to know that genitive right here because the genitive ending will give you the, um, the, the declension it belongs to. So here, since stella ends in AE, then we'll see that it belongs to the first declension. It has a certain type of endings of the first declension. Take, for example, astrum as tree with an I ending in the genitive. If you have an I ending in the genitive, you are in a second declension. Okay, then if you have a genitive that would end in is, like the words you have seen for today, uh, then you would be seen in a you would be you you would find yourself in a third declension. Okay, now it is also important for us to know the uh, the ending uh, the, the the genitive because what happens is that when you drop the ending of the genitive, you are left with a part of the word. That never changes. We call that the, the stem. That's right. So the stem of stella is stel. The stem of astrum is astra, T-R. And at the end of the stem, you will add the endings that you know. So just as a quick review, if we look right here at what we see as the first declension, you see that title up there? first declension, then the genitive is in AE, we know that, typical word aqua, aquae, the water, right? Then what we have memorized so far are the endings of this first declension. A, 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 am, A, A, arum, is, as, is. You put these endings to a word like aqua, you get aqua, 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 aquis, aquas, aquis. All right? So that's the endings of the first declension. All right. 
Then we went to the second declension. The second declension, you recognize it because it has a genitive in, in I. That's right. The genitive is in I right here. So then we are in a second declension. The endings of the second declension. Now we make sure that we understand we're looking right here in this chart as the, at the endings of the second declension masculine. It goes like this. Us, i, o, um, o. I, o, um, is, os, is. So, for example, take the uh, example of animus, okay, that you have right here, animus, animi, animo, animum, animo, animi, animorum, animis, animos, animis. A different set of ending because here we are in the second declension because of that genitive ending in I. Another example right here, they give you the example of nuntius, nuntius, the, uh, another example of a second declension, same endings. But we should also remember that we have declensions, a uh, second declension nouns that are actually known as neuter, neuter noun. The way you recognize these, of course, they have a genitive in I because they are second declension. But the thing is, for these, the nominative is in U-M instead of U-S. So the endings go like this, um, i, o, um, o, a, orum, is, a, is. And the thing that we know about the, um, the, um, neuter is that the nominative and the accusative are always the same okay they are always the same looking okay so they have the same um right here and um right here for the accusative and nominative and in the plural a and a as well okay something important for you to remember all right now you went on to study the third declension last time for last time the third declension is right here and the endings of the third declension were quite different from first and second and I sure hope that you know them the thing that is interesting like the nominative varies we don't have a nominative in US or in A or something that's nice and comfortable like this but the other endings are is, e, m, a and in the plural s, um, ibus, s, ibus these third declension nouns as you know they can be masculine or feminine they can also be neuter Okay, and in the neuter, whatever we had as the nominative varies will be the same funny ending in the accusative because neuter always repeats itself. In the plural, it's going to be R and R. No surprise about that. Okay, now that's a review from last week and before that. So let's recap. If I have a genitive in R in, in AE, then I am in a first declension. If my genitive is in I, it's a second declension. And if my genitive is in IS, we are in a third declension model. Now, the new material for this week. Fourth declension. The fourth declension is recognized by the fact that the genitive is in US. And you go, wait a minute, U.S., that looks a lot like a nominative, that first form that we like so much. Well, sorry, it is the genitive of the fourth declension. And if you look at, a, at an example right here of a fourth declension noun, like fluctus, that means the wave, fluctus is also the nominative. So the nominative and the genitive of the fourth declension will be U.S., before we look at the series of endings, just remember that most nouns of the fourth declension of the fourth declension, yes, are masculine. A couple exceptions that I mentioned right here, manus and domus, but most of them are masculine. Look at the wave right here, fructus, fructus, masculine. Because it's fourth declension, you can assume it's masculine. Look at the endings. Funny set of endings. Us, us, ui, um, u, us, U-um, ibus, us, ibus. These are the endings of the fourth declension. Look at the endings right here with fluctus. Fluctus, fluctus, fluctui, fluctum, fluctu. Fluctus, fluctuum, fluctibus, fluctus, fluctibus. Repeat them after me. Fluctus, fluctus, fluctui, fluctum, fluctu. Plural. Fluctus, fluctuum, fluctibus, fluctus, 
fluctibus. These are the endings of this fourth declension. Okay? So, not much to say about this. Memorize these, and you'll be just fine. All right. Now, let's talk about the fifth declension. The fifth de declension is the last declension that we have. And I promise I will never surprise you with a new declension because there's no other ones. And remember, I'm just bringing you the message right here. I'm not making anything up, ever. The fifth declension has a genitive in EI. Not in us, that's fourth declension. Not in IS, that's third. Not in I, that's second. Not AE, that's first. But in EI. This genitive in EI, like in res, re, or in ds, da, shows us that the noun belongs to the fifth declension. The fifth declension is a collection of endings that, um, that uh, for, for words that are always feminine. Nice news. The endings are right here. S-A-A-M-A. -A -A. S erum ebus s ebus. These that are the endings of the fifth declension. You gotta memorize these along with the memorization of the endings of the fourth declension. All right? If you put these endings at the end of res, for example, res, re, that means the thing, res, re, re, rem, re, res, rerum, rebus, res, rebus. These are the endings of the fifth declension. All right? Well, you know what? I think I'm going to leave it here. It's about 10 minutes, so I'm going to leave that here. Uh, if you look at the email that I sent you, there's a couple of other things that you need to look up. So why don't you look that up? Um, because that's also part of your lesson. But this is my little teaching on uh, the two new declensions that you need to learn for next time. Okay, see you on the other presentation. Bye-bye.